Hello and welcome. We are going to start with the Prism and Rhapsody course for class 11 students, ISC. Uh, this is the first of the chapters as far as the Prism textbook is concerned. And I do hope all of you have this particular textbook, a collection of ISC short stories. This contains your syllabus portion for both class 11 and class 12. Okay, so you need to know the first five chapters because many students are still unaware of what the syllabus is. So the first five chapters in this particular book from a living God to thank you ma'am are in the class 11 syllabus in class 12 is item number 11 to 15. Okay, starting from Atiti to the medicine bag. So I hope that much is clear. Now, what is this particular story about? Let's look at a living God, uh, English Trust SWS. Okay, so it's written by this particular character called Lafcadio Hearn. Okay, now he was a writer journalist of Greek, Irish descent, so Europe, but he wrote primarily on Japan. Okay, uh, in fact, he settled down in Japan in 1890 and also changed his name. So he basically helped in the Western understanding of Japan. So that way, whenever we read about Japan, a lot of it is through this gentleman, through his writings. Now, this particular story is pretty significant because it talks about this gentleman. Okay, uh, he's a real gentleman and this story is also a real story. Okay, uh, it's about a tsunami which affected a village of peasants, of farmers, uh, and a rich farmer, Hamaguchi Gohe, was the one who ended up saving all those lives, 400 lives, as written in this particular essay, by setting his own rice stacks on fire in order to alert the people of the danger that was looming large. Okay, so in that sense, because of what he did, he's worshipped as a god. So the story is what? From what I've told you so far, what do you make of the story? The story is about sacrifice, sacrificing his own investment, selflessness. That is, you don't think about your own selfish means. You don't think he, those guys die. I don't care. But my thing should be safe. He didn't think like that. He actually thought about the lives of those 400 villagers, right? It's about presence of mind to do things at the spur of the moment without losing any time. Because when it comes to saving lives, Every moment is obviously very precious. And finally, it's also about gratitude. I find a lot of books missing out on these points because the villagers, this is all about the first three points which I've mentioned to you. Okay, sacrifice, selflessness and presence of mind is about Hamaguchi Gohei. But there is an element called gratitude and that is on behalf of the villagers that they decide to worship him as a god, construct a shrine for him and even while he's alive, he's there as a deity at that particular shrine. So gratitude on behalf of the villagers. So please ensure that when you're writing your answers, you include all these four aspects. So it's about the importance of community, especially in a time of crisis. And that's what tests you. You know, when everything is peaceful, it's not about testing. You know, everybody will be very happy. But when things start going wrong, when there is a crisis, how individuals and the community together behave at the time of crisis, that's what defines their resilience, their fighting spirit, their spirit as a community that I as an individual, I'm willing to do something for you as an individual. And that's what makes us a common group, a community. Okay, so his sacrifice of his rice crop is in that sense, an act of community spirit. Then there is, of course, the theme of tradition in Japanese society. Um, you need to talk about I'm just talking to you about the theme so that you are aware of what uh, are the different aspects that you need to keep in mind while I'm explaining the story to you and even later. It's about he's the headman of the village. He's a respected figure, right? He uh, kind of ensured that there were no disputes between person A and person B. Then there is a theme of nature, the entire tsunami coming in, engulfing and trying to destruct the entire uh, village on the coast. The setting of the story, where is the setting of the story? It's about, it's a, it's about, a, it's, a, it's a story about a village of 90 thatched dwellings with a population of about 400. And there is also a temple on top of it with a priest. Okay, so let's get started with the story. And I'll keep showing you photographs in order to better explain uh, what I am really talking 
about okay uh, this is a scanned copy of your textbook because i couldn't get it on the net anywhere from time in from immemorial time i mean you also say from time immemorial that's why my i started reading it like that from immemorial time that is from a long time ago the shores of japan have been swept at irregular intervals of centuries by enormous tidal waves means that at very irregular kind of intervals you know there is no ir irregular interval that every month at this month in the month of may or in the month of october there will be this kind of a huge tidal wave that will hit the japanese coast no it could come in may it could come in july it could come in september at irregular intervals from a very long time but the japanese coast the shores have been hit by enormous tidal waves that is along the high tide when the kind of sea waves behave in a rather erratic and let's say in very aggressive kind of manner tidal waves caused by earthquakes or by submarine volcanic action now tsunami is caused by what now those of you of course um, a majority of you would have been born just around that 2004 2005 i think most of you would not be around when the tsunami hit india on december 26 2004 okay i have covered the tsunami so i have practical first hand information about how things were destructed in majorly in the coastal part of tamil nadu nagapatnam and kadalore in particular okay so uh, you have an earthquake so you have seismic activity below the earth surface and that causes the ocean to rise and that's what happens and the, that was the first time the tsunami was hitting india before that one was not even aware of something like this but japan as a country has always been ravaged by tsunami so it's not something which is uh, new to that country okay these awful rising so he's making it very clear that these are pretty terrible kind of natural phenomena okay they are awful their awful sudden risings of the sea are called by the japanese tsunami okay that is they are named as the japanese tsunami the last one occurred on the evening of june 17 1896 that is when he is talking about this he is saying that the last the uh, one the last tsunami occurred on the evening of june 17 1896 okay uh, when a wave nearly 200 miles long struck the northeastern provinces of miyagi iwate and omori wrecking scores of towns and villages ruining whole districts and destroying nearly 30000 human lives so when the tsunami hit on june 17 1896 there was this kind of destruction of almost 30000 lives were lost pretty much similar to what happened in tamil nadu in december 2004 The story of Hamaguchi Gohei is a story of a like cal calamity. So the mistake that many books, workbooks are making, and I would strongly urge you, if you are with SWS, you frankly don't really need to look at any other workbook. We would cover most of it in terms of questions, and in any case, you don't get workbook questions in your examination. We will prepare you according to exam-oriented questions. Okay, but anyway. you are not going to listen to me so you do whatever you want to do all i want to tell you is that many of the workbooks are wrong question and answers and wrong facts and wrong interpretation and analysis okay so what here is being said is that and i have seen this both in class 9 for treasure chest and also now in prism and rhapsody is a story of a like calamity so the story is the story that is going to follow is not the story of what happened in 1896 it's a story of a like calamity and when you google and find out you will find that this particular person was a similar calamity had happened in 1854 and that's what that's when this particular gentleman rescued his many of his villagers is a story of a like like means a similar calamity which happened long before the era of meiji on another part of the japanese coast those workbooks and those teachers who are interpreting this story as what happened in 1896 should just go and google this era of meiji what is the era of meiji era of meiji is the era when emperor meiji was ruling over japan it lasted from october 1868 okay to july 1912 when he died okay so that's what is called the era of meiji this happened in 1896 and here it's saying long before the era of meiji okay story of a like calamity which happened 
long before the era of Meiji. Era of Meiji, I repeat, started in 1868. So we are talking about this tsunami which have hit Japan, Japan in 1854. Okay. On another part of the Japanese coast. So we are not talking about these three towns, which provinces which were affected in 1896. Now, he was an old man at the time of occurrence, which made him famous. Who are we talking about? Hamaguchi Gohei. He was the most influential. This particular paragraph is important because it introduces us to Hamaguchi Gohei. He, and from an MCQ point of view, this paragraph is important. He was the most influential resident of the village to which he belonged. He had been for many years. It's Marawasa. Okay. All these are Japanese names. So the pronunciation may differ a little, but it's more important for you to know the spelling. This means the headman, like the serpent of the village. And he was not less liked than respected, which means that he was both liked, he was also respected. Okay. The people usually called him Ojisan, which means grandfather, okay, elderly person. But being the richest member of the community, he was sometimes officially referred to as the Choja. Okay. That was another term. So he was referred to as the Ojisan, the Choja, and he was also the Miruasa of the village. Please remember these three terms and what they mean. Okay. From the MCQ point of view, also from a reasoning point of view, I have given you lots of reasoning questions in the PDF. Also MCQs, there will also be long five mark and 10 mark question and answers written. So in that sense, everything kind of gets covered. So you just need to, depending on the nature of the question, you just need to cut, paste, add, delete to the answers that I have written. He used to advise his smaller farmers about their interest to arbitrate. Arbitrate means mediate. That is, if there is a dispute between X and Y, you sit and talk to both X and Y and find a via media to resolve the dispute. That is called arbitration. To advance their, uh, their money at need and to dispose of uh, their rice for them on the best terms possible. So he would do different kinds of activities, you know, to mediate, to advance them, I mean, being a moneylender of sorts, to also ensure that they got the best price for their rice. So he was doing things which are all in the interest of the villagers. Okay. Hamaguchi's big thatched farmhouse stood at the verge of a small plateau overlooking a bay. Okay. Uh, now, a bay is a part of a coast where the land kind of goes into form a curve. Okay. So a plateau, you know, is like a, you know, a small piece of land kind of overlooking. So overlooking, if you need to know what a bay looks like. Now, this is, these are two photographs of the bay. You see the land, the, the, the land kind of curving in, right? Similarly, you see here, the land kind of curves in. Now, this is called a bay, a part of the coast. This is a coast where the land kind of goes in, in order to form a curve. Okay, so this is a bay area. Now, uh, the plateau, uh, the plateau uh, mostly devoted to rice culture. So they were rice farmers was hemmed in on three sides by thickly wooded summits, right? So it was kind of surrounded and uh, hemmed means um, enclosed uh, and summit is the highest point of a mountain or a hill. From its outer words, the land sloped down in a huge green concavity. Concavity is a curved hollow slope. Okay. Uh, as if scooped out to the edge of the water and the whole of the slope. So you are giving, being given an idea about the topography of that particular area, right? So it's like a hill, okay? And then there is a sea. There is a sea and it is like hill. And I'll tell you, show you a couple of more photographs to get you a better idea. And so the whole of the slope, some three quarters of a mile long. So it was a pretty kind of a steep kind of a hill was so terraced as to look when viewed from the open sea like an enormous flight of green steps divided in the center by a narrow. Now, you see the rice farming in Japan is undertaken in the form of terrace farming. You would have read that in class 10 geography. Okay, so if you look at these photographs, now this is the bay. Now, this is how the terrace farming would happen. So, this would almost look like steps. On each of these steps, there would be the paddy which would be grown. You see this? So, it's almost like very... Uh, nicely uh, done steps in on which the uh, so you see the hut the house will be here and you would kind of all this would be the paddy fields in and this is called terrace farming which is very prevalent in Japan so that's what he says so now if you see the photograph now that you have seen the photograph now you see this now you'll be able to understand this better so he says 
when viewed from the open sea like an enormous flight of green steps you understand okay so there is the sea then there are this green steps on which the paddy is grown and then there are the houses right and his house is even more on top where i mean uh, and the temple is also similarly on top okay wide zigzag a streak of mountain road okay so and this also like a mountain 90 thatched dwellings so that was the number of houses which were there in that particular village and a shinto temple right a japanese temple composing the village proper stood along the curve of the bay so there was this bay right and that's how the whole thing was so you get an idea about the topography of this particular uh, village let me try to draw so that it's even more clear though my drawing is not very clear so this is like the sea and then you have the hill okay and it is like this kind of terrace kind of farming and there are these 90 odd huts okay which are at different levels of the terrace farming straggling up the um, straggling up the slope for some distance on either side of the narrow road leading to the choja's home choja who is choja it is hamaguchi gohe now let's now come to the action now that he has established the geography the topography of this particular place one autumn evening one autumn evening hamaguchi gohe was looking down from the balcony of his house so from his aerial spot at some pre preparations for a merry making in the village below so there is some kind of a party which is going to take place in the village there had been a very fine rice crop so they had done well with the harvest and the peasants were going to celebrate their harvest by a dance in the court of the ujigami now this is again a japanese term which means the guard ujigami is the guardian spirit or god of a particular place in the shinto religion of japan okay uh, the old man could see the festival banners which is means no boring again remember this from for an mcq format okay fluttering above the roofs of the solitary street means solitary street there's only one street the strings of paper lanterns festooned between festoon means they have been tied between bamboo poles the decorations of the shrine and the brightly colored gathering of the young people so there is a lot of festivity in the air he had nobody with him that evening but his little grandson so there was only his grandson who was 10 years old the rest of the household having gone early to the village so the other family members had all gone to the village to take part in the festivities he could have accompanied them had he not been feeling less strong than usual he was feeling a little weak that particular day the day had been oppressive and in spite of a rising breeze there was still in the air that sort of a heavy heat which according to the experience of the japanese peasant at certain seasons precedes an earthquake this is important he's feeling that there is some kind of an uneasy kind of weather the weather is feeling a little different and he says the experience of the japanese peasant the farmer who is all the time see always more than urban folks like you and me the farmer will always be able to he doesn't need to look at the weather app to know whether it is going to rain or whether there is going to be bright sunshine the next day by looking at the earth by looking at the sky and smelling the air around him the farmer trust me and i've covered a lot of agriculture will always be able to tell give you a more accurate idea than any of the weather apps or any of the officials at the imd they are so good at it because an experienced farmer will always have a better understanding of the earth the sky and the atmosphere the air right so the experience of the japanese present what did he feel at certain seasons precedes. so he says there was something in the air that's kind of a heavy heat that's kind of an unusual kind of a heat garmi which usually precedes an earthquake and japan was used to the seismic activity right the earthquake and presently an earthquake came and an earthquake did come earthquake means the earth shook and on a mountain you would feel it even more because when you are at a height uh, it was not strong enough to frighten anybody so it was not like very high on the richter, richter sale scale but hamaguchi who had felt hundreds of shocks in his time because he is an elderly person thought it was queer now he thought he had felt he was experienced as far as earthquake was concerned because he had experienced many such earthquakes but he thought this one was a little strange cure means a little strange a little weird because it was pretty long it was pretty slow that is you keep 
kept feeling the earthquake for quite some time and it was some kind of a spongy motion right it almost felt like you know as though somebody some kind of suction activity is taking place you know spongy conveys some kind of an interaction with water the way i am interpreting it right so you feel as though there is some kind of contraction some kind of a you know you feel as though there is some kind of a slow kind of a movement that's what he describes it as probably it was but the after tremor please remember these three adjectives long slow and spongy but it was probably the after tremor of some immense seismic action very far away maybe some earthquake had taken place very far off from his village and you were feeling it slowly and you know in a very spongy kind of motion out here in his village okay the house crackled and rocked gently several times because then they all became still again so the house kind of moved like it does in an earthquake i don't know if you have experience in earthquake right i remember my first experience of an earthquake was when i was in class 4 i remember we were sitting on the floor and having our food this was around 7:38 in the night and we were on the what from the first floor uh, in delhi and one could feel the floor shaking okay that was the first experience of an earthquake last very few seconds hardly some 4 seconds 5 seconds max i mean that's pretty long but you feel it right it feels very weird as the quaking ceased ceased means stopped hamaguchi's keen old eyes were anxiously turned towards the village okay now he started looking at the village ki has anything happened there has anything altered there he it often happens that the attention of a person gazing fixedly at a particular spot or object is suddenly diverted by the sense of something not knowingly seen at all so he's kind of you know being very reflective at that point in time right so he is saying that you know i'm going on looking at a particular place but my attention is kind of diverted because i'm feeling there is what we call a sixth sense right there used to be a camera person of mine i mean he's still around obviously um uh, he would always say seventh sense and i would say sixth sense hota hai so he would say seventh sense so you know by you know you have a gut feeling that something is going to go wrong right many of us feel it like that sometimes okay by the by a mere vague feeling of the unfamiliar in that dim outer circle of unconscious perception which lies beyond the field of clear vision so what you are seeing beyond that you kind of feel which you may not be seeing but you have a feeling that something is going to happen it's almost like you know you get that feeling by smelling the air by just you're looking at something but nothing is happening there but around the atmosphere in your head you're feeling as though some kind of activity is going to take place or is happening right now which is in the circle of unconscious kind of perception he rose to his feet and looked at the sea because it was happening at the sea in the sea it had darkened the sea color texture had changed quite suddenly and it was acting strange i don't know if you have any of you have seen this movie called dasavtaram it's a tamil movie kamal hasan my favorite actor um it ends it's a very fascinating and a very action packed movie and it ends with the tsunami which hit um, tamil nadu in 2004 and if you can just fast forward you would find it on any of the ott platforms if you can just fast forward fast forward and see how uh um, ks ravi kumar the director had actually picturized with of course cg uh this tsunami affecting the marina beach in chennai okay have a look at it it's quite a fascinating it just give an idea about the kind of destruction that can happen of course it's very filmy also it seemed to be moving against the wind it was turning away from the land right so the sea and this happens during the tsunami what happens is that and a lot of destruction happened in sri lanka on the resorts um at the resorts the sea starts receding which is a very unusual kind of phenomena the sea doesn't recede like that of course at the beach it will move back and then it will come again but the sea recedes quite a lot and it recedes and recedes and recedes and then comes back with an enormous kind of force that is the tsunami okay so uh um, it was running away so he is kind of personified by saying that the sea was running away from the land okay within a very less time little time the whole village had noticed the phenomena the village had noticed the phenomena because it was unusual apparently no one had felt the previous motion on the ground they had not experienced the earthquake which hamaguchi had but all were evidently astounded by the movement of the water 
they were running to the beach and even beyond the beach to watch it and that's how the maximum casualties even in tamil nadu happened because when the sea started receding people were rather surprised and perplexed at this rather unusual kind of natural phenomena so they all started going towards the beach towards the sea the receding sea are sea piche bhag raha let's try to kind of you know push it back they thought that the sea was kind of you know giving up on land and that's how the casualties happened because when they when it came back with an enormous flow without giving any time for reaction to the people that's how many of the casualties took place in tamil nadu in 2004 the same thing can happen out here so the people were evidently astounded by the movement of the water they were running to the beach and even beyond the beach to watch it no such ebb had been witnessed ebb means this kind of movement had been witnessed on that coast within the memory of living man things never seen before were making apparition apparition is a reference to a ghost or a supernatural kind of an element okay unfamiliar spaces of ribbed sand and reaches of weed hung okay uh, <coughs> unfamiliar because they are not seeing those that kind of land because all along they would only see the sea out there but now all that had been kind of give it's almost as if the sea is giving up and it's exposing things which had been never seen before like ribbed sand and these kind of weed hung rock but left bare even as hamaguchi gazed and none of the people below appeared to guess what the monstrous ebb signified okay what this kind of receding of the water signified no one really could have an idea hamaguchi himself had never seen such a thing before not that hamaguchi himself had that kind of experience but he remembered things told to him in his childhood by his grandfather father's father that is his oji san and he knew all the traditions of the coast he understood what the sea was going to do so because he had been told about it by his grandfather he knew what to expect unlike all those people who had never experienced that kind of a thing before in their life perhaps he perhaps he thought of the time needed to send a message to the village or to get the priest of the buddhist temple on the hill to sound their big bell so if they rang the bell it mean there is some kind of danger right so he needs but how does he send a message to the priest on the buddhist temple how does he do that time is very less so but it would take very much longer to tell what he might have thought than it took him to think he simply called to his grandson he decided that he does not have the time to send a message upstairs to the priest at the buddhist temple tada quick very quick light me a torch so he asked his grandson to get him a torch taimatsu or pine torches please remember this again from an mcq point of view all the japanese terms you need to know their meaning in english are kept in many coast dwellings for use on stormy nights that's what they are used for right on stormy nights and also for use at certain shinto festivals so this is the use of the taimatsu the night the child kindled the torch at once and the old man hurried with it to the fields where hundreds of rice stacks representing most of his invested capital this part is very important that you know the the sacrifice that he is doing of burning his rice stacks because all his money was invested in it stood awaiting transportation and he just had to transport them to the market yard approaching these those nearest the verge of the slope he began to apply the torch to them hurrying from one to another as quickly as his aged limbs could carry him so he started setting fire to them the sun dried stalks caught like tinder the strengthening sea breeze blew the blaze landward and presently rank behind rank the stacks rank behind rank means the stacks were there right it's almost like an army column right Uh, uh the stacks burned into flames sending skyward uh columns of smoke that met and mingled into one enormous cloudy whirl so there was whole lot of smoke which was created tinder is the dry material to start a fire tada astonished and terrified ran after his grandfather crying so uh tada kind of cried now this is how a tsunami looks okay this is how a tsunami looks you know where the sea kind of comes back okay and what he is doing out here now this i have taken from a website i hope there is uh, no issue with that in order to kind of enlighten you better this is how he kind of sets fire to it so he says that he says and tada is obviously terrified and astonished he's scared and he's also very surprised oji san why oji san why why but hamaguchi did not answer he had no time to explain he was thinking only of the 400 lives in peril in danger for a while the child stared wildly at the blazing rise that burst into tears and ran back to the house feeling sure that his grandfather had gone mad that was his first reaction 
first reaction of course was surprise and fear and then he concluded that the Ojisan had gone mad to do something like this. Hamaguchi went on firing stack after stack that is setting fire to every stack till he had reached the limit of his field that he exhausted all the stacks. Then he threw down his torch and waited. The acolyte, acolyte is the priest, the person who assists a priest during a particular religious ceremony of the hill temple. He saw the fire. Okay. Observing the fire set the big bell booming. Now he saw the fire. He thought there was an emergency here that his rice stacks had caught fire and help was needed. So he started hitting the bell ring. The whole idea was that when that happens, all those people who are at the beach, okay, at the shore, they would all come in order to extinguish the fire which had been set. Okay, now you understand what was Hamaguchi's plan. Hamaguchi watched them hurrying in from the sands and over the beach and up from the village like a swarming of ants. Like, you know, when he's seeing from a distance, they'd all look like ants climbing up. And to his anxious eyes, scarcely faster for the moment seemed terribly long to him. And he thought they were kind of running very slow. They need to run much faster in order to escape the approaching tsunami. The sun was going down the wrinkled bed of the bay and a vast, sallow, speckled expanse beyond it. Right? I mean, this, this is talking about the color, you know, color. And, you know, there is an entire expanse of the land. Lay naked to the last orange glow and still the sea was fleeing towards the horizon. Fleeing means again personifying. Fleeing. It is kind of moving backwards towards the horizon. Because, you know, it's kind of reversing. Apni gaadi ko reverse kar hai. So that then it will come with a huge force on fifth gear. Really, however, Hamaguchi did not have very long to wait before the first party of succor, succor as in relief, you know, to help, arrived. A score of agile young peasants, the younger people were able to climb much faster, who wanted to attack the fire at once. Attack the fire means to put out the fire with water. But the Choja, another title for him, holding on both arms, stopped them, saying, Stop, let it burn, lads, he commanded. Let it be. I want the whole Mura here. Now, Mura is referring to the villagers, okay, to the entire village. Now you see, this is what happens. He has set them on fire and this is how all the people come out here, okay, in order to extinguish the fire. So he says the whole village was coming and Hamaguchi counted. All the young men and boys were soon on the spot and not a few of the more active women and girls. Then came most of the older folks. So that was the order in which all of them came from the shore up to the up the hill to Hamaguchi's place uh, and babies at their backs and even children for children could help to pass water you know if they had to pass water children even children could volunteer and help in the entire uh, process of providing help and the elders too feeble to keep up with the first rush could be seen well on their way up the steep ascent right what we have already known that it is a very steep kind of hill the growing multitude that is the number of people still knowing nothing looked alternately in sorrowful wonder at the flaming fields and at the impassive face of their choja and the sun went down the sun had set and now is when the tsunami will strike grandfather is mad i'm afraid of him sobbed tada in answer to a number of questions he's mad he set fire to the rice on purpose i saw him do it right he says he's mad i saw him set it on fire so Hamaguchi said, as for the rice, the child tells the truth. Yes, what he's saying is absolutely what happened. I set fire to the rice. And then he says, are all the people here? The Kumicho and the heads, you know, the it's a title again. And the heads of families looked about them. Kumicho is a group. The group and the heads uh, of families looked about them, you know, generally to see, ki, okay, hamari family ke sab aagaya, nahi? is anyone, everyone around and made reply. Main reply is a very weird kind of English. All are here or very soon will be. We cannot understand this thing. He says, Kita. Kita says, look at the north. Shouted the old man at the top of his voice, pointing to the open. Look at the northern side. Say now if I be mad. And then tell me whether I am mad. Through the twilight, now they see why he had done what he had done. Through the twilight, eastward all lookward. Okay, twilight is when... The dust time, you know, when the sun has kind of set. Okay, when the sun has set and, uh, you know, the dusk time. And saw at the edge of the dusky horizon, a long, lean, dim line like the shadowing of a coast where no coast ever was. So, there was a very weird kind of a shadow which had fallen on the coast. Okay, it's looming large. The darkness, it's kind of, um, it's indicative that something very 
bad is going to happen. A line that thickened as they gazed, that broadened as a coastline broadens to the eyes of one uh, approaching it and yet incomparably more quickly for that long darkness was the returning sky. So the darkness was what? Was the returning sky and this is how the tsunami would strike. So the sea was kind of coming back. So the sea was coming back to this particular hill, towards this particular hill with almost a vengeance. Was the returning sea. The returning sea is an important key phrase. Please use it. Towering like a cliff. This also. And coursing more swiftly than the kite flies. Kite is not patanga. Okay. Uh, this is not talking about that kite. Kite is the reference to the bird, you know, like which is like the eagle kind of a bird, okay, uh, which kind of soars very high in the sky. Tsunami shrieked the people. Now they realize what was coming. And then all shrieks and all sounds and all power to hear sounds were annihilated, means they were destroyed by a nameless shock heavier than any thunder as the colossal swell smote the shore with a weight because it kind of completely took over that sent a shudder through the hills and with the, so the hill kind of shook shudder through the hill means the hill kind of shook and with the foam burst like a blaze of sheet lightning so there was lightning there was thunder and then this entire sea completely came over the hill and the hill kind of shook so you understand what had happened then for an instant nothing was visible but a storm of spray rushing up the slope like a cloud so there was this whole lot of water and you know the kind of you know destruction that was visible and the people scattered back in panic from the mere menace of it when they looked again they saw the a white horror of sea this is an important key phrase raving over the place of their home so when you're talking of tsunami you should also use this particular keyword uh, place of their homes it drew back roaring so the sea goes back and then comes back once again right and tearing out the bowels of the land as it went bowels means your land hair Bowels is the inner part. So it's kind of tearing out the thing. It's almost like it. the sea has been described as a monster and a horror. So it's kind of hitting back at the land and it is kind of tearing out from the land. Land ke andar jo hai, everything it is kind of taking it out. That's what is called the bowels of the land. Twice, thrice, five times the sea struck and ebbed, but each time with lesser surges. So every time it was coming back and hitting and there was a surge which was being made. Then it returned to its ancient bed and stayed still raging as after a typhoon. So it came one, two, three, four, five times and then it kind of stood and that was it. But it had created huge amount of destruction. On the plateau for a time, there was no word spoken. All stared speechlessly at the desolation beneath. Desolation means, uh, you know, the kind of whatever was left and it was, you know, a sense of emptiness. Uh, the ghastliness of the hurled rock and naked ribbon cliff. You know, the rocks were kind of thrown. They were not at the place where they were before. They had been moved elsewhere. Okay, the ghastliness and it had gone and, uh, I mean, uh, smashed a particular house, a thatched dwelling, etc. So there was a, it was a very ghastly kind of a site. A very, you know, there was a lot of destruction and that's what is being described by the ghastliness word. Uh, the naked ribbon cliff, like the cliff, was not now looking like a naked kind of thing because everything on top of the cliff had been destroyed. The bewilderment of scooped up deep sea rack. Rack means wreckage, you know, and bewilderment means, means surprise. And shingle shot over the uh, shingle is again referring to whatever is there inside the sea, right? Shingle is like small pebbles or stones on the beach. Uh, over the empty site of dwelling and temple, the village was not, the greater part of the fields were not, and even the terraces had ceased to exist. So all those terraces which I showed you, they were no longer now in existence. And of the homes that had been about the bay, there remained nothing recognizable except two straw roofs tossing madly in the offing. Everything else had been destroyed. The after tremor of the death escaped and the stupefaction of the general laws kept all lips uh, dumb. You know, um, stupefied essentially means, you know, when you're completely stunned, amazed, you know, you, you can't say anything you, because you're so taken in by the surprised. You're completely stunned until the voice of Hamaguchi was heard again, observing gently. That was why I set fire to the rice. He, their Choja, now stood among them almost as poor as the poorest for his wealth was gone, but he had saved 400 lives 
by the sacrifice. So he had kind of, now this is important because while he had lost all his invested capital, he had lost all his invested capital, but he had saved 400 lives in the bargain. Little Tada ran to him and caught his hand and asked forgiveness for having said naughty things. Not naughty, not is probably not the appropriate word for saying inappropriate things. Whereupon the people woke up to the knowledge of why they were alive. Now they realized that they owed their lives to this man. If he had not saved them, he would have been, they would all have been on the beach, on the shore, and they would have been killed by the tsunami. Whereupon the people woke up to the knowledge of why they were alive and began to wonder at the simple unselfish foresight. Yaniki, foresight means to be able to see to the future what could happen that had saved them and the headmen prostrated themselves in the dust before Hamaguchi. Headmen means the other uh, guys of the group and the people after them. Then the old man wept a little, partly because he was happy and partly because he was aged and weak and had been sorely tried. Sorely tried means he had really been tested because for him to do this kind of thing would have taken a lot from him. You know, emotionally, he would have been completely drained out. First, completely losing all his wealth in order to save the lives and then to see the kind of destruction that had happened and then to feel that, okay, we did not lose people at least. My house remains, he said, as soon as he could find words. So he says, my house remains. You can still come and stay in my house, automatically caressing Tada's brown cheeks. You know, he's playing with his grandson's cheeks and there is room for many and many people could stay in my house. Also, there is a temple on the hill where people can stay and there is shelter there for others also. Then he led the way to his house and the people cried and shouted. So this is as far as the action which happens on that particular evening. Whew. The period of distress was long because in those days there were no means of quick communication between district and district. So it took time for relief and help to come and the help needed had to be sent from far away. But when better times came, the people did not forget their debt to Hamaguchi. What is the debt? The fact that he had given them their life. They had all taken a rebirth in that sense. They could not make him rich because what would they do to because they were all poor people and they had lost everything. What would they do to make him rich? So they could not do that nor would he have suffered them to do so, nor would he allow them to do anything of this sort, even if, even had it been possible, even if it was possible. Moreover, gifts could never have sufficed as an expression of their reverential feeling towards him. You know, gifts can never, you know, if I'm feeling truly like, you know, you are God, even if I give you a gift, it doesn't make up for things. It is the emotion that really matters. It is the emotion that really matters. You know, of what you feel for someone who really helps you that is what truly counts that is what truly counts not like you know ki main, you know i will give you a gift so you know it's like you know the things have been cancelled no how you communicate your feelings and how you express them and what you truly feel for someone inside your heart that's what really matters i always say a true friend is someone who will defend you even when you're not there you know i am friends with someone that someone hears someone saying bad things about me. There are two options for this particular friend. Either he keeps quiet and says, ah, karne do, kya farak padta hai? or the person defends him saying that, no, I know that person. He will never do such a thing. I know him very well. Whatever you're saying is a lie. That is what is a true friend. Okay. That person need not give me or anyone else a particular thing. That doesn't matter. But it is that sentiment, the emotion. That's what is truly valuable. So they declared him a god and thereafter called him Hamaguchi Demijan. I mean, this again, I don't know the pronunciation. I must admit, thinking they could give him no great honor. But please remember the spelling. And truly no greater honor in any country could be given to mortal man. Okay. So they called him this. And when they rebuilt the village, okay. They built a temple to the spirit of Hamaguchi. He is alive, but they built a temple to the spirit of the person. You know, the, the real person, the real selfless, sacrificing kind of person and fixed above the front of it a tablet, okay, bearing his name in Chinese text of gold and they worshipped him there with prayer and with offering. So he became a living God. That's how the title comes from.
How he felt about it, I cannot say. I know only that he continued to live in his old thatched home up on the hill with his children and his children's children, just as humanly as simply as before, while his soul was being worshipped in the shrine below. So the body was there, but he was shrine, his soul was being worshipped as a deity uh, down below in the temple. A hundred years and more he has been dead. Now he has been dead for over a hundred years now, right? Uh, but his temple, they tell me, still stands and the people still pray to the ghost of the good old farmer to help them in time of fear or trouble. So that's what, you know, when there is trouble or fear, they reach out to him to pray to him. Uh, that's what his legacy uh, really is now. Okay. I asked a Japanese philosopher and friend to explain to me how the peasants could rationally imagine the spirit of Hamaguchi in one place while his living body while his living body uh, was in another, uh, also I inquired. Also, I inquired whether it was only one of his souls which they had worshipped during his life, and whether they imagined that particular soul to have detached So, you know, a Western person is not able to understand this Japanese system. Ki person is alive. How can you worship him? You know. How are the two Hamaguchi Gohes, you know? So he's not able to understand this, you know? So he says that whether one of his souls, you know, uh, he's alive. So how does it kind of, or uh, when he was alive or even when he was dead, so what has happened, right? right? So uh, which they worship during his life and whether they imagine that particular soul to have detached itself from the rest to receive homage, right? So if you are alive, everything is inside me. How can a part of me go outside for people to worship me when I am alive. Right? That's the kind of confusion that he wants clarity on. The peasants, my friend answered, think of the mind and the spirit of a person as something which even during life can be in many places at the same instant. Right? So I am here and my mind and spirit can be in some other place also to provide help, to provide some kind of relief. It's possible is what the Japanese belief is or at least the farmers believe. Such an idea is of course quite different from Western ideas about the soul, right? It's very different from the Western idea. Any more rational, I mischievous ask, basically saying that you are not being very rational. It's not making sense to me. He says, so that person said, well, and he, with a Buddhist kind of smile. So it's a Buddhist idea. If we accept the doctrine of the unity of all mind, that is if all mind is unified, the idea of the Japanese peasant would appear to contain at least some adumbration of truth. I could not say so much for your Western notions about the soul. Adumbration means a vague hint. Okay, it means a vague hint. So he says, if we are to talk, if we are to talk about, you know, that all souls are united, the you know, minds are united, the idea of the Japanese peasant that what they believe that the souls can be a different place would actually sound, you know, even if it is vague, it sounds more credible than what the Western notions of the soul are. That is, after you die, you go somewhere else. And before that, it cannot happen. So they don't, they don't kind of um, distinguish between the body and the soul, whereas the Japanese are able to do so. So that is what the Japanese theory is. It's a little vague, as he himself says. It's an adumbration of the truth, right? It's an adumbration of the truth. It's a little vague. But, and it may kind of, you know, people may wonder, you know, when he's alive, how can he be worshipped, right? Uh, but that's how the Japanese peasants took it. And this was a reflection of the deep sense of gratitude, which I talked about right at the beginning of this explanation video. With this, we come to the end. As I said, I'll be giving you MCQs. I'll be giving you logical uh, reasoning uh, questions and answers. Um, I think I've written... 31 of them. Okay, so that kind of covers everything. And then I'll also be giving you both 5 marks as well as 10 marks question and answer so that every aspect is covered. So you just need to kind of alter and control C, control V, karke. you can uh, answer the question depending on how the question is essentially asked. Okay, but I mean, most of it obviously will be, all of it will obviously be covered. Okay, so I hope this chapter is clear. Okay, any doubts, please ask in the chat box. Otherwise, I don't think you should have any problems. Only this last part, but that's essentially vague. Okay. Thank you very much for watching.